I'm Ellie Blackburn. And I'm Bonnie Too Good. And this is Off the Leash. Proudly brought to you by the Pancake Parlour. Lovely. Ellie Blackburn. Hello, Bonnie. It's our first episode it is. of Off the Leash. Yes. We finally made it. We have. We've been talking a lot about it. <laughs> we have, haven't we? We've got a special guest today, though. We do have a special guest today. And uh, before we introduce her, um, I just want to go back and forth a little bit with, yep. you know, how this all came about and, and why we're doing it. Yeah. So our main kind of thing is to share stories. That's what we're really passionate about and what we want off the, off the Leash to look like in the coming weeks. Yeah, it is. We want to be able to share stories, provide some insights into people's lives, especially people within our program and obviously our own lives um, is definitely an important part to it. Yeah, looking to get people in weekly, but if not, you'll be stuck with us and hopefully we can give you something. I think so. I'll think give the laughter and Ellie will <laughs> make up the rest, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So should we move on um, <laughs> we into our special guest for the day? I know, we've got a great one in today. And speaking of sort of trailblazers and people that have walked the w- walk and talked the talk a little bit, they're... There's very few that have sort of done it and um, done it extremely well and to the credit of the person that we've got in today, our special guest. So, here we go. I'm getting excited to read this yeah, all here out. here we go. I'm ready for it. So, today we have the general manager of women's football here at the Bulldogs, Ooh. Debbie Lee. Now, before you chime in, Debo, I want to give you your achievements. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. So, 304 games, it says in your Insta bio. <laughs> within within yes those 304 games you racked up five VFLW best and fairest league best and fairest the in Helen there Lamberts. yes the Helen well done Ellie yes, thank, thank you. you providing some good yes. content yeah, already okay go, go, go. we've got a six time all Australian in there you've also run the Lisa Hardiman medal for best on ground in grand finals 1991 and 2004. We weren't even a thought in the first one. <laughs> <laughs> and kids that we've drafted this year probably were just born in 2004. But that's another story, I guess. Um, and that's not really scraping the surface of what you've achieved on the field. And if we move to off the field, uh, the list is even longer. You were the founder of YCW, Sunshine Spurs, which was the first in the Western Suburbs. Um, you have medals named after you in both the v- uh, AFL uh, National Champs and VFLW champ- uh, competitions. Uh, you're an AFL Life member, oh. a cheeky Hall of Fame inductee. <laughs> just that, add that just in. Just add that, pop that Quietly. on top. Um, and then on top of all of this, the amazing things that you do in football, you're also a mum to two beautiful kids, Stevie and Mac Man. Um, so here we ha- have everyone, Debbie Lee. Wow. Well, well, yes, thank you so much for having me and the inaugural show, Off oh, the no, Leash. Jeez. Yes. We just wanted to There's start another first. I'm going to add that to my, exactly. my bio. Absolutely. <laughs> it's the bio. I absolutely it will. In. But Pop thank you in. for the introduction. When you hear all of that, Debo, like all your achievements and, and you look back on, you know, your trailblazing career, what's the initial feelings that you get about it? I think it's just you just did what you did. You know, we were, you know, you set out, I wanted to play footy, no different to you girls. Uh, it just looked different, you know, 1991, looked very different. <laughs> Sticky tape, um, numbers on T-shirts and yeah. bike pants, that, that was in. That was the, the thing that was going at that time. So that was my first game, that's what we rolled out in. And it was just, I had the same passion, the same love of the game as what you two have. It was just a different environment and it just looked different. But, uh, you know, I got so much out of footy as well. I got so much out of connecting with people, playing the game, being involved in the uh, the AL- AFL game of footy. So, um, yeah, it's quite a journey. It's been quite a journey. I'm a bit worried about 1991 because you're right, <laughs> when we look at the list, there's probably 15 women in our list that wasn't born. So that's a bit of a worry. I reckon yeah. we have maybe two, three <laughs> that were born, that were born around yeah, then. Yeah, be very few, very few in that space. But, Deb, like... Out of all of that, what's the most standout moment for you? Sort of getting to this point of AFLW competition. So all of that, what moment sort of stands out the most? 
Oh, there's probably a couple, um, like it's, there's, there's the one around the AFLW competition, mm. you know, that day, which I still refer as Princess Park. Um, and mm-hmm. funnily enough, um, I'll share with you that I had almost an out of body experience oh, that day. Okay. So I'm sitting there. Um, I don't know why they asked me to commentate because it's not my strength. But anyway, well, I was sitting <laughs> in the commentary box and the ball went up and seriously, and you know me, I'm not you know, a spiritual person at all, I heard this voice to say out loud, we've made it. So that was a huge day. I think also if I go back to the formation and winning a flag in the Spurs, because that was not just about the game and, you know, the grand final and actual game, it was about the journey. Um, So that was pretty cool, I think. And then I think, you know, just reflection recently is around, I actually always wanted to work in footy. I got there. You know, it was, uh, I never went to university. I never, you know, my university has been footy. So I actually carved out a bit of a career for a passion that I, you know, love. Yeah. Debo, I get so, whenever you, uh, you speak, I'm in so in awe of like how captivating you are and how you speak about your journey. Are there any challenges that stand out for you? Because as you said, in 1991, the women's game looked very different to what it does now. And yes, we have our challenges now, but I'm sure... What were the challenges that really stood out back then that were like? <sighs> yeah, I, I guess there's a couple, Bond. There's there's the one around um, me as a young woman. So I, I was 17, started my own team at 19, and I was trying to work myself out at the same time. So for I reckon for about 10, 8 to 10 years I wasn't myself. You know, I never shared personally um, around my relationships. Um, um, because I felt if I, if I did share my life choices, it would have been... Um, focused on that as opposed to hey the girls just want to play footy um, I got no a lot and and I guess that I didn't have any currency I didn't have any currency I walk into a room there's no currency I had no value for anyone so it was just oh yeah tick box she's the president of the league she you know we better invite her type thing so that sense of not having um, a sense of value or making a contribution which then let's be honest it didn't your confidence doesn't it mm, so you know but I guess where I did how did I recover from that? It was the v- the Victorian Women's Footy League community. Mm. Go back, play with your club, go back with the opposition teams. That's what kept me going because I just, you know, got so much out of it. It was such a different time then too. Like even I remember playing in the VWFL and it's such a community environment, wasn't it? Like just the ability to play a game and it was rough as guts on the field like I, I had some yeah. moments with you on the field yep. and we was pumping you one game and I said look at the scoreboard yeah. as, and as and the blackest does <laughs> and he turned back to me and was like oh come on mate get something better than that yeah. that's bloody ridiculous and it's like yeah fair enough that's a, that's a <laughs> good that point is that all you got <laughs> is that all you got <laughs> essentially but you'd go into the rooms after mm. the game and, and have a beer with the opposition yeah. and things like that it was yeah. great yeah I, I think you're right black as in the early in the early stages of footy, it was a community within a community mm. and we stuck together. Like I remember at Sunshine, like this is a time, we're talking early 90s, we'd be so excited if 10 people turned up to training. Yeah. That was like, oh, we, we're, we're making it. Mm. And what we'd do, we'd go down and train with Albion, which was two suburbs away, and we'd train together and we might be playing each other on the weekend. But as the fact that we just felt we could be ourselves, we felt comfortable, we all had the same passion. And, you know, Friday nights was, was huge. Everyone would just, you know, meet and we'd have great fun and that's the same with Sunday. So it was a real celebration but it was a connection yeah. because we knew outside of our little world it wasn't the same world. Absolutely. And I think that's what we all – and we never really spoke about it. It was interesting. It was just something that just was innate, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And now, Deborah, we love the Trailblazer U. Let's and, park that. Yeah, let's, park. let's get on to the fun let's stuff. Let's move on. Let's move on. So Debbie Lee, as we've mm. come to know, yes. is the ultimate storyteller, I believe. Ultimate. Ultimate. She's a oh, No one better, range. really. That's no. why we have her here on the first episode. Absolutely. Jeez, you're setting, setting me up here. Let's so we're going to we're gonna sort of sort of squeeze in a couple of stories here from you, Debo. The first one I want to get into was you don't actually – you didn't always work in women's football – you had careers outside of it. Sort of talk us through the early days. What did you do working-wise and provide some good stories there? Yeah, so um, when I was much younger, yeah. I actually wanted to get into um, PE teaching at university. It just didn't work out that way. Mm. As you do, you think, how am I going to make an income? So I thought, 
I'll go be a swim instructor. So <laughs> off I went to be a <laughs> swim instructor and it basically turned into a bit of full-time work. So uh, every Saturday morning I'd teach the little ones and it was, you know, two classes an hour. And this yep. particular morning I thought, okay, I'm going to jump out and talk to the parents. Yep. So what I did, 9, nine, nine to 9.30, jumped out, talked about little Billy and Billy's arms are going grey and he's knocking the <laughs> jelly beans off the roof and fantastic. <laughs> and the parents were a little bit looking at me and I thought, oh, maybe, you know, I don't know, maybe they're not you know, into this swimming or into me. Yeah. So anyway, um, <laughs> it went on and went on. So every half an hour I'm jumping out, jumping out, and I'm sort of getting the same sort of reaction. So anyway, yeah. 12 o'clock came, done six classes, thought I've done a great job, yeah. start telling myself off. And when I used to go to swimming, all I used to do is put my bathers on, put my trackies on, and then when I'd get there, just, you know, undress, jump in the pool. Nice. What I realised... <laughs> at the end of the three-hour session that I'd hopped out and spoken to parents is that my bathers were inside out. (laughs) (laughs) So all the lining was exposed and my bathers were inside out. And they're looking at me, beige, beige, beige. And they're looking at me going, I don't beige (laughs) bathers. No, the, the inside, inside of it. Oh, 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 gosh. <laughs> no, <laughs> <it's just laughs> beige, <laughs> But inside out. Yes. Yeah, so oh. the, the Speedos, one piece, yeah. the beige, inside out. Oh. True story. So hey, true that's story. why you had everyone being like, mm-hmm. little Billy's parents. I'm taking Billy yeah. home now. <laughs> and, then, and then next week, I had no classes because they all took the children out. <laughs> <laughs> so that was it for swim oh, teaching. What did we do next? <laughs> Oh dear me! Mate, that is so good. I can't believe that. Like, how embarrassing <laughs> to walk yeah. out in just like how embarrassing. I mean, one one full piece, length, one piece speed up. No, 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 one piece bathers. Right. Right. They're right. They're right. right. They're right. They're right. We're probably talking early mid nineties. But inside out, demo, inside like, out. And who does just, that? No. Who does that? But the, I like, do. Well, surely <laughs> someone would tell you. Yeah. I think they were shocked. I think they were shocked. Other, yeah. were shocked. But, but I was just this? like, she didn't do that. I was just not going to tell it. Yeah. Because yeah. you know what? I read. So there's these cute little chocolates I get at Nonna's house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you, you eat the chocolate. Then in the wrapper, they've got a cute little sentence. And like they said true. Cookie. Yeah, like a fortune cookie, but Italian. <laughs> and they're called bachis. They're delicious. And in that, I read once, it said true fa- true friends. True friends tell you when you've got something in your teeth. Yes. And yes. Debo, what I'm reading here is that you didn't have many true friends at school no, class. No, no, yeah. they were all parents. They were mortified. They're like, <laughs> "What is she doing?" <laughs> like, imagine me going to a swimming pool with little Stevie girl or Mac. I'd actually probably tell the person because yeah, I've been I, in that situation. I think so. Yeah, I think so. But yeah, that was that was one of many stories. Yeah, mate, that's that's <laughs> incredible. That just is incredible. for those at home, this is. Yeah. So we'll be in the ice bath, and yeah. we're just you mm. know. Doing our recovery, getting the muscles or what they need to do with ice. I'm not sure what the scientificness is. But um, we'll all be in there chatting away. Then Debo comes in and she'll just need to tell us something about whatever whatever it is. But then she's like, actually, I need you to tell a story. I need to tell you a story. Okay, girlies have got something for you. Girlies have got a story. Okay. And then she might whip out something like that or something that Mac Man or Stevie has done at Kinder or... Any yeah. of those kinds of things. And it's pro- honestly the highlight of our training it session. It is. It is. What's your go-to story, though? What's the, what's uh, the number one story? And yes, I know it. You know it. We know we it. We all know yes. it. Everyone needs a know it. story. Yeah, well, the, the number one story um, is obviously you guys know. So my sister lives in LA. Yep. She's lived there for almost 20, 25 years. Um, and early on when she arrived, she used to do a bit of work at the Viper Room, which was, um, you know, from my understanding, is quite a, a good nightclub. Um, and Sounds I, good. Yeah, and, and, and that particular night I, I, she invited me and off, off we went and you know, we were sitting there um, talking away as I do mm. um, and there was three people in this booth and I went over and had a chat and it was um, Christian, Johnny and Kate. So I sat down, I'm having a chat. Um, we're talking about, of course, football. I'm trying to explain that and I'm about asking women's them. Football women's to footy. To yes. I'm like, yeah, it's like a bit like rug, um, your gridiron, but it's not. And they're all looking at me, whatever. It was, I was probably sitting there, I asked what they did and they said, you know, um, yeah, I'm, a, I'm in the um, acting. I'm doing acting and I'm, and I'm thinking I've been in, in LA for a, you know a week and a half and everyone you ask 
yeah, is, is in that park, yes, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, oh yeah, no worries. So I said, look, I'd love to get you a drink. So I got up and I went and got a, <laughs> I got a Budweiser, which was on special dollar fifty <laughs> shout. Okay, so love Budweiser. Come back, gave him the Budweiser, and kept talking, kept talking. Probably been there for about half an hour, thirty, mm. uh, forty five minutes. My mm. sister, and I said, look, I said, look, I'd love to continue have a chat with you, but I'm over here visiting my sister. Yeah. Um, you know, but thanks for your time. And mm. I got up. And I said to this particular guy, Johnny, I tapped him on the shoulder and I said, good luck with your career. <laughs> okay, so I get up, I walk over. My sister goes, who are you speaking to? I said, oh, they're lovely. I said, it was Kate, Christian and Johnny. She goes, oh, yeah. She goes, do you know who they were? I said, oh, yeah, someone. They're doing a bit of acting. I had no idea. Johnny Depp, <laughs> Christian Slater and Kate Moss at the, at the time. Yeah. He was going out with Kate Moss. He owned the nightclub. <laughs> I'm buying a dollar fifty Budweiser's going, good luck with your career, Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> and that is a absolutely true story. You know what? They would have loved it. Oh. They would have been like, this woman has oh. no idea and it is a breath of fresh they air. They realised mm. I... Had no idea. But that would have been early were. days in their careers, yeah. though. Yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but they only had a jump club. Street. Yeah. <laughs> and here's a dollar fifty Budweiser. Yeah. 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 Oh my god. It was happy hour. I got it. Don't oh, worry, guys, I got it. No, I, I, I was oh, I think I was twenty, twenty one. I was I was twenty one. So I was going swim back. teacher way. <laughs> but it, yeah, 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 swim teacher way. Yes. So a dollar fifty Budweiser, that was good as a time. They should have considered themselves lucky. Yeah, they should have. They should They got the oh, they got the Debbie Lee Road show twenty years or something ago. They did get the road show. They did get the road show, but absolutely true story. Absolutely. I love it. Now, I want to move on to what you're doing now. So, Debbie Lee, you're general manager of women's football here at the Western Bulldogs. How did you get this role? Sort of what was the process to getting here? And um, we can sort of discuss a bit more about it. Yeah, I guess, um, like as it was, sort of fell into it, to be honest. Um, When I was president in the Victoria Women's Footy League, um, there was a starting to be a bit of a focus around women's football with, with some clubs. And originally I was at the Bulldogs, but I was employed as community manager. So for a lot of my time, I was there for eight years, um, set up the community arm of the of the Bulldogs, nothing to where it is today, but we did Bulldog friendly schools and all that sort of stuff. And part of it was just trying to connect in with the VWFL and, and the Bulldogs sponsored it a bit. And that's probably as far as it went. Then went to Melbourne for a period of time, um, probably for another, I think I was for eight as well Um, and uh, that's where as community manager and that's where uh, women's football started yep. and it was really funny because at Melbourne they talked about hey how are we going to grow fans how are we going to grow a new supporter base as all clubs do and they had this China strategy and we went yeah. to China and I remember this particular meeting I was sitting there and I said to Jen Watt who, my, who was my boss at the time I said I think I've got an idea what about we concentrate on women? And that was sort of where the, the mm. conversation started to grow from the uh, exhibition series. Yeah, wow. um, so I guess I always wanted to, you know, work in footy and in women's footy. I just didn't know. There was nothing there. Yeah. It didn't even have jobs there. There wasn't a, you know, a head of women's footy. There wasn't GM. Um, so community manager was sort of my, my into the AFL industry and then was able to sort of, you know, Start conversations while I held that job, and now I've got my my job that I that I love. So we've just wanted to park the trailblazer, but what I'm hearing here is just it was just not necessarily trailblazer on the field, but trailblazer in the admin space um, because you said you just you have to go in there and start having conversations because there was actually no pathway in the women's league, and you started that conversation again. Things that you do, mm. Debbie Lee, that um, incredible. are absolutely incredible and we can't thank you enough for that. So, and for young girls that don't necessarily want to play the game mm. but want to be working football, maybe it's the admin side, like you're trailblazing mm. that. So we kind of yeah. went against what we wanted to do here. Yeah. Um, but a little <laughs> bit more about um, more specifically your role here as general manager of of the Bulldogs and the women's program, what's a bit more involved yeah. in that? So essentially um, oversee the function of the program. So what does that look like? That looks like list management component. That looks like um, finance, you know, looking after the budget, the environment piece, um, employment contracts for staff. Um, you know, there's a whole sweep of things. And the other lens that I bring to the club is how we represented within the club and um, not only just the women's football program but women how do we you know as an outsider um, if we're really genuine and authentic about this what, what do we look like 
um, to someone walking past or to a new supporter or an existing supporter. So I guess there's um, there's a there's a different um, there's different ranges across. You know, working in with um, the marketing department, um, play appearances, um, just broadly making sure that things are ticking over. Um, got some great people, as you know. You know all our great staff. Um, the environment's a big one. It's really mm, ensuring yeah. that you. Oh, hope I can create an environment where people can be themselves first yep. and foremost Absolutely. really important be inclusive yes. um, because if you can create an environment like that and this this happens in our program hopefully <laughs> but you as players you grow you play your best mm. footy you, you can be yourself so um, yeah there's a lots of different levers I guess um, Bond that, that, that I play Absolutely and what is it like so in a day so talk us through your actual day what does it look like yeah. when are you getting in here obviously we're training late at night and stuff like that yeah. or you know the early saturday morning sessions that we're doing yeah what is it what does a day of debbie lee look like um well this morning i got um wheat bix thrown at me by stevie so we started <laughs> off with that um started off with a bang so we great. started oh, off with stevie, stevie so i had to change my uh, jumper um and then we dropped nice. mac off at school and nice. then i came in and um look you know a couple of things you know we there's there's the lead in so there's the there's you know it might mean I, I need to meet with someone internally we might talk about okay what is um our players doing from an asa perspective what is our membership campaign look like what is um the aflpa i met yesterday i went and spoke to the afl yesterday i have a meeting this afternoon with the heads of women's football oh. at afl oh, yeah. um, and then it's just really ensuring um you know um we have department heads so we have a real check-in with all uh, across our departments within the within the program <coughs> from a medical point of view so how how's al going or how's bonnie going it, are they okay with their treatment? Is it being communicated correctly? So it's it's really just really stretching, and it can be anything, Al. And I think that's why I love it because yeah. I don't know what the day mm. is. You know, I know my role is to ensure we we provide a program that is elite and that people enjoy and can be themselves and and really um, reach their full potential. Yeah. Um, and there are other outcomes um, that sit around that, of course. Um, so it can look very different from day to day. Um, you know, we've got the intra club coming up, we've got the practice match coming up, we've got match day, so we're talking through what does our match day look like, how the coach is going, are they connecting in, what's their relationship, is there any challenges there? So it's just really testing the water um, all the time because that's where you get your nuggets, I find. Um, I get my, my golden nuggets at training when I turn, you know, come have a chat to you or, or the staff or what have you. We've also got the VFLW program, so that's yeah, wow. kicking off. Yeah. Um, so that's running side by side. So, yeah, it, it's 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 managing people, I would say. Yeah, right. Um, Sounds then, like you've got so much free time, though, Deb. Like, yeah, like, plenty, plenty. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. honour that we could get you for an hour <laughs> just to do this. And throw two beautiful children in. Oh. Um, Stevie, you know, Mac, yeah. Stevie and, and, and Mac Man, who's Mac's six now and Stevie's three and a half, and hopefully at some point he can come back down because he misses all, oh, we all miss the girlies. Him. All, all the, the girlies, oh, Mac Man. We love Mac We love Man. him down here. Sure you got a good one. Good story about Mac Man. Tell us, I, I want this the school, the bike riding one. You've ridden the school. <laughs> the bike riding one. Riding one. <laughs> yes, yes. So, the, so um, you know, try to be active, Mum, yeah, yeah. you know. So I said it was bike day or whatever they call it. So I thought, all right, Mac, we'll go on the bike. I'm going to ride to school. He was so excited, but his helmet on, off we go. So, you know, he come to the, the lollipop. The crossing, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was so excited. I hadn't done this. It's all new for me. I was all excited. I'm saying hi to the mums, so hi to the dad, ding ding, you know, all that sort of stuff. <laughs> Ring the bell, the bell, Ring the bell. <laughs> anyway, I tell you what, lollipop lady wasn't happy with me <laughs> because when it came to the crossing, didn't hop off my bike. Oh. You didn't hop. You got back to hop off the let bike. Let me know as I walked across. Mummy, you got to get off your bike. <sighs> got to get off your bike. And what then? And the and lollipop man told you off. And then the lollipop yeah, lady happy. told you off too. Yeah, yeah. What did they say to you? Just gave the look. The mm. look. You know, the oh, look. yeah. And Mac Man's like, Mum, yeah. stop embarrassing me. Yeah. Yeah. Get off the yeah. bike. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing Get worse when Mum embarrasses you. <laughs> <laughs> but Mum, don't kiss me. I'm going to school now. <laughs> yeah, he's nearly up to that, which oh, I'm, you know, oh, nearly broken terrible. hearted. But it's funny because Mac knows, you know, mm. two mums um, knows we all play footy. So sometimes it's like to stir me up a little bit, Ooh. you know. So sometimes okay. he'll go... I don't play boys at school. Or he'll say, girls don't play. All my friends say, girls don't play footy. And I go, okay. I go, so what do you say? He goes, I tell them that my mummy plays. And God love him. You know the little AFL cards you've got and you can buy that book? Yeah. He's got my 1974 old ugly photo of me kicking, I don't even know what my 
kicking style looks like in oh, there Devin. as well. They're right. Yep. Oh, right hand drop. Yeah, it's, and he puts it in there. So oh, he's he's got a really good my you know, heart. I had to convince Mac that men played football because he was always around wow. the girls. The girls. Yeah. But uh yeah, you know, he's he's got a good little measure. I always yeah, say to him, you're missing out. If you mm. don't if you don't play with girls at school, you're missing out on fifty percent of the population. Who wants to do that? Yeah, no, exactly. No, no one wants to do exactly. that. You know what? My little cousins are actually very similar. Yeah. Because that they were born when I think uh, when, like the uh, competition came in, so they, when they were younger, saw me playing like a few years ago, and then my um, little cousin he goes, oh, I can't play footy. I was mm-hmm. like, what do you mean? So like, only girls can play footy. I was like, oh, mm-hmm. well, there's a change. That's yeah, a change. There's a change. That's a, I don't need to check Ooh, myself right now. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure when I was growing up, that yeah. was not the case. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I'm starting to hear more and more stories like that because even with my nephew yeah, Riley, he's yeah, the exact yeah. same. So when the boys were playing in the final series, he was like, where's Ali? Yeah. <laughs> he was like, well, yeah. unfortunately, no, I'm not playing yeah. in the final series. But like, it's like kids now that are growing up and are part of women's football in these environments, they, that's what they know. And yeah. there's no difference to it. They don't know that, you know, women's footy hasn't been around for in this sort of spotlight for, yeah. for very long. So it's, a, I mean, it'd be amazing to have that and to yeah. see that and hear that from Mac Man. I mean, yeah. that must sort of make your heart melt yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. And I guess, you know, this is even I've got a nephew who's um, 17 and the way he, you know, he knows obviously clearly been around footy with me, but just the way he, his lens on, on women and, and we talk about how do we actually um, break the mould of, you know, um, you know the, the perception of um, we, men do this and women do this. We've got this next generation and you mm. guys are doing it. I mean, you know, we love AFLW and we love the game, but as you guys know and, and what you guys organically do is you're actually changing the social lens for a lot of people because you're going against the grain. And even we have Pride Round, you know, that's a conversation mm. we never had in footy, did we? Oh, no, you know, never, until never. The, Until the women landed. And yeah. now it's a great conversation and a conversation we should have. Absolutely. So that's what I love about AFLW is, yep, I love watching new girls play, absolutely, number one. But also the, the spin-offs with yeah. what we've just talked about with the kids yeah, and yeah. then what creating new conversations as well. It's just absolutely. phenomenal. What do you think's like the next step in in the women's footy journey? Mm. Uh, like we're starting to share our stories. Do you think that's a big yeah. area that we need to push more so people can understand what our lives are like and what we're doing and how the comp- yep. competition's kind of been put together? Yeah, I think so. I think visibility is really important. Yeah. Um, and I think one thing we, we – and this this is what this show is about. It's great. It's actually giving people a platform to talk about the story and learn a little bit more because I think there is a bit of a lack of understanding around what your lives look like. Everyone yeah. thinks you're rocking, you know, at two and, and you're not doing anything and holding jobs <laughs> down or, you know, anything like that no. or the pancake parlour. Oh, my God. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just get that one in. Yes. Like Al's working, you know. Flipping the pancakes. Yeah. Flipping the pancakes. Yeah. Um, so I think it's, you know, people don't know what they don't know. Exactly. So let's tell the story. Exactly. You know, there's a bit about the, let's talk about AFLW. People didn't know it existed. People no. didn't know women like you could play the game. And then all of a sudden we started telling the stories and look what happened. So I think, um, you know, that is, it's important. And I think if we're going to make it more visible for women, so more administrators or when Stevie Girl's growing up, yep, the, the, the players she can see now, but what else can she see? Yeah, exactly. And I think that's that's a really cool thing. I know a co- little bit of that people always ask me at the moment is about female coaches. Yeah. Where do you kind of like see that at the moment in the women's game? Yeah, I think we've got some oh, we've got absolutely some rippers. outstanding. We've got some rippers. Outstanding yeah. Mel Hickey, Nat, uh, Natalie Wood and um, Kirby Bentley and then our um, Macca and also Roe in our VFL. So... Um, absolutely, these women um, understand the the game. They understand the content. Just giving them an opportunity. I think what's really important is giving them the right opportunity. Yeah, mm. yeah. I think that's really important because it's about sustainability. Yes. We've seen uh, from the first year to now how many coaches have been sp- spat out, yeah. male and female. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it's about and and our program is about making sure that the their um, skill set is yep. right that yep. they can add value to our program absolutely mm-hmm. um, and we can grow them yeah and i think you've got to get that right yeah um and nathan as you know is he's just a champion of, of people and a champion of women and his responsibility as director of coaching is to actually really you know I- empower these coaches all yeah. our coaches yeah exactly and i think we do a great job of that at the football club and it's something that i think as a playing group we've spoken about a fair bit is like 
how good are our coaches Mm -hmm. like I think we're constantly in awe and especially like this year I mean we had Woody last year and I work closely with her personally but this year having Hickey and and Kirby down and Kirby doing like the skill stuff and I mean she was such a unique player wasn't she She like the things that she could do on a football field she'll tell you you how big her biceps are as well (laughs) she keeps telling me like I haven't played for a while you probably were she tries to tell people how to sell candy and all the work she's she's trying to do she had a uniqueness about her but like we've got people we can learn off like some really incredible women we can learn off and and in saying that as well Deb where do you how do you see our program at the moment and and where do you see sort of the team getting to particularly this season yeah um I think first when I arrived at Bulldogs you know my assessment was we need to sort of probably have a assessment on um environment a little bit more but we'll focus on environment um I think we have really wonderful people at our club and it's about how do we grow them and create an environment where they can continue to have their confidence um so that the players feel that they're confident and that they belong here and they belong to and 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 are an AFLW player I'm very excited I'm so excited to see the the young and I think we've seen like Mm. granny's just you know she's just I feel like she's sort of found her her niche Mm. and she's comfortable you can see her being comfortable it's a combination it's not just the young ones it's it's you two you know yeah. i can't wait to see you two um and and, and all the players and I, and I really think um you know i want to make finals this year and i'm yeah. sure you do too yeah. so that's oh, yeah. the aim when we're, we're, we're here to play footy and create a good environment but we're actually here to be competitive and it's fun when you win oh yeah um and and, Isn't you, it? <laughs> and you sacrifice a lot yeah we all do and, and you know, let's not be shy we want to win yeah we want to be in the finals and we want to win a premiership so Absolutely. you know we all know our mantra is two by 25 we're not yeah. shy in saying that well no. that's two premierships in by two by 2025 now that could be 23 24 could be 24 25 who knows um, I think we've got the right mix of people, the right character, yeah, um, and we're growing. So you look at last year to this year, we've improved, haven't we? Yeah, Absolutely. we have. And we it's have. if we hadn't improved and we're just at the same level, that's when we're like, oh, geez, what are we doing here? And you know what is exciting is that, you know, we have that youth, but we if we keep this group together, mm. like we're, we're playing footy together for three, four, five, six years, yep. and yep. that growth could be amazing yeah absolutely and along with the people that you've put in sort Mm. of the staff externally to that as well it's not just the players that are doing it we've got some incredible staff in place and I think that was a big part of your role particularly in the off season and sort of what we saw in the COVID landscape particularly in women's football it was you know the staff in in clubs were were limited for players Mm. access and but you made that a real priority for us so I mean yeah it's incredible to know that we've got great staff great people um, really good playing group and, yeah, an exciting season ahead, I think. Yeah. No, it's um, it's funny because we talk about the young and the mature age, but the mature age is very young still. I'm 24 and, and I'm called a veteran. Yeah, oh, that's... Mate. I'm 24. Oh. But that's, that's what Ali, I mean. Arnie, Arnie, Arnie. 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 <laughs> going to get all the jokes oh, I used to get. Mate. <laughs> but do you know what? That's the... That's yeah. To your point, Bob, that's the exciting mm. stuff too. Like, you guys have got another, you know... Eight to ten, mm, yeah. let alone the other ones that are coming through. And mm. if we can keep a good environment and people feel like, yeah, I want to be here, yeah. that's a real key. We want players to be here. Now, we don't get it right all the time. No, exactly. Not naive to think that, but it's about how do we continue to improve to ensure that people go, yeah, I want to play at the Bulldogs. I want to stay at the Bulldogs. So, you know, and that's challenging. We've got expansion year next year, so who knows? But, um, you know, that's the once we get that out of the way, I think will be off and running yeah the competition will settle and yeah you won't have to worry about expansion from then on in and it'll be just sort of longevity at the clubs and um focusing on the future of of football and how your club can go yeah absolutely so that's uh what we're looking forward to looking forward to it debbie wonderful debbie Debbie lee Lee. well debo thank you so much for joining us on our first 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 podcast of off the leash so you've been Oh, uh, absolute pleasure to have on board. You know, we're grateful to have you in our our corner and our environment. And um, yeah, thank you for sharing. No pleasure. Thanks for being asking me to be the first guest right. on the inaugural. Who else would we pick? On the inaugural, <laughs> the inaugural, <laughs> the inaugural, <laughs> of the inaugural of the inaugural of the of the guest. Tongue, tongue mouthful, isn't it? Yeah, but you got it in the end. I did. I did. No, yeah. thanks for having me. And um, yeah, we'll put this out and see how many hits we get. Mate, all the <laughs> hits. Flying. We'll be flying. Thanks, Demo. <laughs> thanks. Our uh, pleasure. Thank you for having me.